2020 was drawing to a close. The Indian writer Arundhati Roy made some remarks about the processes of repair being called for, called forth by our present circumstances. This is what she said. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This pandemic is no different. It's a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. We've seen glimpses of the new world that's struggling to be born in the uprising for black lives, in the proliferation of local mutual aid efforts, in the strikes, walkouts and campaigns by workers at hospitals, warehouses and schools for safety and protection. It's clear to millions that radical solutions are urgently needed to confront the overlapping crises we face. <laughs> so, welcome to the 2021 Falmouth Illustration Forum, which this year is the Repair Forum. When my colleague Hannah Waldron suggested the name back in March 2020, if anyone remembers that world, I don't suppose that any of us, though we all immediately liked it, had the slightest idea of how re relevant that theme would become one year later. Seeing that pretty much everything else has had to be done differently this year, I'm going to break with tradition and start our forum at the end. With our guest talks already with you to watch in your own time, Let's begin our gathering with some thanks then, rather than waiting for the close of play. First, a big shout out for the great work by the MA Illustration Authorial Practice students, Hannah Nielsen, Georgia Bailey and Rosie Hearn, who took on the challenge of producing our, our Repair Forum's visual, visual signature and design. Big thanks to all. Also to our new MA course leader, Hugh Frost, who with his partner and colleague, Hannah Waldron, have been steering us through this strangest of academic years brilliantly, taking the constraints of the pandemic as a spark for new innovations that we can already see we'll be hanging on to when things begin to level out, not least our Repair Forum webpage. And this year we have a first in our forum's 19 year history as two of the steering team welcomed a daughter into the world this weekend. Somehow scheduled between forum emails in Hugh's case without missing a step. So massive congratulations there to Hannah and Hugh. Finally, and most obviously, I want to thank our speakers. There's never been a forum here that I've not met much within that I valued, but this year's talks have set a new bar for me in the way in which they turn fully to the forum theme and offer a diversity of approaches to it. For me anyway, there are talks here that have already reoriented how I think about practice, and I'm pleased to know they're safely archived now for a second go. Exactly a year ago, our 2020 Home Forum focused on creators' responses to the climate and ecological emergency. Somehow slipping under the wire as a gathering of 200, just as the pandemic was taking hold here. Indeed, the first UK lockdown came into effect less than two weeks later. And as I recall, it was out of those conversations at the Home Forum that Hannah's suggestion for this year's theme emerged as we found ourselves wanting to broaden out the whole question of what it means for our practices to operate as entangled processes of mending, not least those called for by damaged and damaging societal structures, but nor only that. The Falmouth Illustration Forum has a strong tradition of inviting a guest each year who comes from outside our immediate fields of practice a thinker or researcher who might help us to locate our creative work within a broader frame and critical context. Our first forum event at 12.30 today welcomes one such speaker, the eminent environmental lawyer Fahana Yamin, who as someone deeply embedded in the intergovernmental COP climate negotiations of recent decades, speaks to us of climate and ecological repair 
as a matter of reparations and accounting for the toxic legacies of empire embedded within our everyday lives, haunted as they are by redundant patterns of relationship, no less than atmospheric pollution. Fahana offers us a brilliant frame for the diversity of perspectives we meet in this forum, as she notes the confusion that often creeps in when we speak in vague or overgeneralized terms of collapse or of endings. Ecological and climate collapse may be empirical realities, she tells us, but ethical and social collapse do not flow from these in any simple continuum. Fahana notes how historically times of crisis have often in fact been witnessed to an intensification of social cohesion, creativity and repair within our shared lives. Fahana will be taking questions live from 1.30 after her talk's been live streamed, so do join us then. Then at 4.30 today, we'll be joined by the painter Marin Carlson and the graphic novelist Aidan Koch for another live Q&A. If we acknowledge that the way we tell a story affects ourself and our place in the world, Marin asks us, what does that mean for artists as storytellers? Marin's reflections turn us towards our own contamination with otherness as we find stories, images and artworks arriving as the alien within us, acting upon us beyond our willed intention. Marin notes that in species terms, viruses always punish winners and that we ourselves are literally made of virus, which makes up 8% of our human DNA. My own fun fact for this year's forum. Marin ends with a reflection on Viriditas, the greening power named by the 12th century Saint Hildegard of Bingen that speaks so eloquently to our work today as creatives. The disruptive force our practices set loose that nonetheless inclines us always towards the sustaining power of collaborative life on earth, to fostering what Anna Singh has called the possibility of life in capitalist ruins. For Aidan too, meaning in here is in patterns of relations. Aidan offers a brilliant practice led reflection on the fluctuating versions of the self constructed and reconstructed through the open ended space of three panel narrative. Along the way, we encounter coping mechanisms within Western society, those social forms we presented with to make sense of our own lives and the failings of those forms before the ecological degradations of our moment. How do we make sense, Aidan asks us, of being with a disappearing life world? Her answer consistently is through maintaining relationships, making kin, connectedness, through opening spaces within our work to explore being, being with, being in relation to all that is non-self. Then at 9.30 tomorrow morning, we have two parallel workshops from guests who bring very di divergent but equally fascinating insights into species of repair. In another delightful piece of synchronicity this year, Falmouth BA illustration alumna Molly Martin celebrates the launch of her new book, The Art of Repair, today. It still seems an unlikely claim that we only found this out from Molly herself when we invited her to bring her insights as both artful mender and illustrator to our repair forum. Molly will be leading a practical hands-on skill sharing using haptic traditions of repair to ground her insights into the subtle restorations that such a slowing down offers to our increasingly screen-based lives. Meanwhile, the illustrator and mental health advisor Amberly Green will lead a sign up workshop at 9.30 tomorrow at the same time. As both an illustrator and a mental health advisor, Amberley's powerful and fascinating work speaks of challenging nar <coughs> narratives surrounding black women by depicting them in spaces of joy, vulnerability and peace. Amberley brings us a reflection on repair as recovery, a 
as an intersectional work that celebrates and affirms the layers of social and political identity within each of us. Included in this, we get a disturbing but fascinating case study of the history of illustration's use as a reinforcer and driver of prejudice. Who gets to decide or contribute to our narrative? Amberley asks. She reminds us of the great American poet Audre Lorde, <coughs> whose name also came up at last year's forum. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. Then at 11.30 tomorrow morning, we're very happy to welcome four alumni from our MA Illustration Authorial Practice Programme, Ferna Zola, Louise Bell, Chloe Bonfield and Emma Burley, who each join us at different stages of their postgraduate careers to speak of where their research and practice has taken them since, professionally, creatively, academically. Chloe's meditations on words as spell casting, world making, include an image that stuck in my mind as a powerful emblem for our theme, a blood spattered battle helmet decommissioned now as a narrow beehive, harboring the arts of peace where once it was an instrument of war. Emma tracks the development of her own extraordinary graphic memoir, which combines frank autobiographical honesty with imaginal subtlety and richness, and marks Emma's insatiable appetite for the graphic novels that line her shelves, which show in the work's dexterous and poetic unpacking of the mutability of memory and the inherently political nature of our most personal experience. Also speaking with candour of the mental health challenges exacerbated by, by the pandemic for her and like many others, Fern brings us a graphic fantasy that as once a confrontation and a space of immersion, both an escape and a solace, a way of coping a way of tapping into the deep memory of our water sack cells, carrying the marine root of our humanness within them. Once again, we meet Ecoside armed with nothing more than empathy and animism, an intimate engagement with thought, with the living world. Picking up another thread from the 2020 forum, Louise brings us a meditation on cognitive and affective empathy terms you may remember if you were here last year. She talks of the unbridgeable gap we face between the traumas of the past embodied in the damaged and remade fabric of Plymouth city streets and how these offer a paradox of empathy, tempting us to situate ourselves as if we knew another's experience. Maintaining a scrupulous attention to the necessary demarcation between observer and observed, Louise shows how easily we dis disregard each soul's uniqueness when we assume that we know. Check out their four talks and come and join us with your questions and hear from them in person. Then at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon, our last workshop will be led by Emma Burley, who will offer a meditation on painting from the subconscious, allowing the fluidity and unpredictability of our working media to lead us. Come and join her, you'll be in great hands. She's very good at what she does. Finally, we close our forum with a Q&A with the celebrated sculptor Hugh Locke. We're delighted you've joined, joined us and uh, Hugh walk, walks us through an incredible body of work spanning the several decades that precede the events of the past year. Work which now seems to speak with uncanny prescience to the eruptive groundswell of the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. At the heart of this conversation are Hugh's interventions on British and American public statuary, which he interweaves here with his own memories of the insignia of empire so ubiquitous in his Guyanese childhood. Hugh speaks of his work as a repairing of the unnoticed histories that still peer down at us from these plinths and simultaneously as a mending of his own complex relationship to the British Empire of his upbringing. Resisting any lazy move towards a single story of villains or heroes or even monarchist or republican, Hugh invites us first and foremost to an attentive curiosity 
about who and what exactly we find mixed up in these bland or august cultural markers whose baggage we're apt to lose sight of just through their everyday familiarity. So there's our guests. And just before I close, I've got a few practical um, things to let you know, uh, those planning to take part in the workshops. So all students um, work from the workshops where you're generating outcomes can be shared in the main illustration forum Teams channel. And that's also true for non-illustration students. So all you need to do is join that team within the uh, Teams app, and then you can go there and you can, you'll can you find a, a conversation going on uh, about the workshop you're part of where you can share work directly. Questions to our speakers can be asked in advance via the same illustration forum Teams channel. And also, of co course, via the Q&A box in the live Q&A sessions. So we'll actually be reading questions out from that thread. So do post questions in there and put your own name by them and maybe even what course you're from, we can get, invite the speaker to speak to you directly. There are still places available for Amberly's sign up workshop, which is the only numbers capped workshop. So see her section on that site. That's really going to be an unmissable workshop, I think. Very, very good for some of you. And the morning and afternoon today, as many of you will know, are deliberately left roomy uh, for, for you all to watch the pre-recorded videos. And you'll find links for all of those on the main forum homepage. So welcome, welcome to the home forum, everyone. And uh, I think we're all good. <laughs>